I'm guessing if you're watching this video, you love Canva as much as I do. It seems like I'm always discovering new ways to use it and level up my graphic designs. And since I know many of you use Canva for your business too, I wanted to give you a quick rundown of 10 really awesome Canva hacks that you can use to make your designs appear more polished and professional. So let's get into it. Now, real quickly, before we jump into hack number one, I want to invite you to join me this coming Thursday, April 11th, either at 2 p.m. or 8 p.m. Eastern time for a free live training I'm doing all about how to start and grow a profitable digital products business. If you're someone who wants to earn some extra money working from home, then selling digital products online might just be the right next step for you. I know how intimidating it can feel though to feel like you're starting from scratch, building from square one, and not sure what to do first or what steps to take. So this is why in my free training, I'm gonna be laying out the four steps that you'll need to take to make sure that your digital products business gets started off on the right foot. So registration for the class is open. Spots are already filling up super fast. So you can click the link in the description box below to hop over and get registered for that. Or if you're watching this video after the live class has already passed, you can also get a great head start by downloading my free digital product starter guide that's also linked in the description box below. Now, as you know, we're about to jump into these awesome Canva hacks. Some are available to use on the free Canva plan and some do require Canva Pro. So if you don't yet have Canva Pro, I have a free trial linked in the description box below. If you'd like to try out Canva Pro, it'll give you 30 days for free on Canva Pro to experiment with it and see if it might be the right fit for you. Otherwise, you can always just use Canva for free. All right, enough talk. Let's go ahead and jump into Canva hack number one, which is to work with brand kits on Canva. So on Canva, you can create a brand kit, which is basically like a set of different colors and fonts that you want to work together to be able to easily pull from. So of course, you might think of making a brand kit for your actual brand. Like I have my Kate Hayes brand here with my logos and color palette, but you can actually add on and make multiple brand kits as different sets. So let's say you're designing Canva templates to sell. You might have a specific feel or aesthetic that you're going for each different type of template. So I might create some that are themed like boho, groovy, modern. You can go on creating these for different types of looks that you're going for. So let's say I'm creating a new one called muted boho and it's completely empty here. So the first thing I might want to do is to add some colors, which normally I would have to click to add new and then either select a color or input an individual hex code and continue doing this multiple times to add lots of colors. But a shortcut for this, if you already have a color palette in mind is to actually just screenshot or save the picture with the color palette on it and then bring that in here under logos. And once it has your picture of the color palette you're liking uploaded, it automatically adds these colors to your brand kit. So it saves me a lot of time from having to input these individually. And then I can go on to whatever fonts I like and even photos and graphics I wanna use with that brand kit. So then when I'm working on a design, I can come over here to where it says brand, select the brand kit I want, and then it automatically pulls the colors and I can click to shuffle throughout those brand kit colors until I'm happy with some of the colors that come up or I can come up to where I edit the color for the background and I'll see my muted boho brand kit colors right here and I can individually work with these. Okay, our next second Canva hack is with an app called Pixelfy. This is an app we're gonna use to actually give us that really trendy pixelated look that is on the rise for this year and expect to be really popular when it comes to graphic designs. So I've got this photo of a coffee cup that is an actual photographic image, but I want it to be sort of pixelated to have more of a trendy look. So I'm gonna come over to apps and search for Pixelify. This is the one I'm looking for. So I'm gonna click on that and I can choose the image I wanna use to upload here. And it automatically creates a pixelated version of that. And then I can use this slider that says pixel size to choose if I want the pixels to be smaller, which gives it more detail or larger to make it a little more blocky. So once I'm happy with the look, I can click to add it to my design and I'm just gonna compare it here with my original image. You can see if we enlarge it a little bit, all of the little squares of color, which are the pixels and having pixelated designs like this this is definitely becoming more and more trendy and is one of the main graphic design trends on the rise for this year. So using this app to create this kind of look is a great hack to know about with Canva. All right, in our third hack, we're gonna talk about using frames to create shapes. You might already be aware that Canva has an awesome element section filled with graphic assets, elements, photographs, lots of different things that you can use in your designs, but sometimes it can be a little frustrating if you just can't find the thing you're looking for. So frames can be an awesome solution for this. So let's say I'm wanting to create a design with with this sort of linen texture that's in the shape of a torn paper. I've looked in the elements section. I can't really find what I'm looking for. So I'm gonna come down to the frames section under elements. And I can see there's lots of different types of frames here in different shapes. So maybe paper is the section I'm gonna look in. And I like this one that looks like it's in the shape of a torn paper with these rough edges. So as you know, with Canva frames, you can drag and drop an image into here and it will fill up the frame and end up in the shape of the frame. So if I'm wanting, let's 
let's say that linen texture, but I wasn't able to find it in Canva, I can source that image or file from a different place like Creative Fabrica, Creative Market, or even with a free photo website like Unsplash. Then I can upload that file into Canva and then drag and drop it into my frame. So here I've got the linen texture image dropped into my frame. And if I enlarge it, I can move it around and make it look the way I want it to. So for this design, I might bring this down to the bottom to create sort of like a border. And then I can always click the little plus icon here to duplicate it, to bring another one up to the top. And I can continue working with this, adding text and creating this design to look like whatever I'd like it to with the use of frames as shapes that I wasn't quite able to find the right thing for inside the elements tab. All right, our next Canva hack is one of my absolute favorites. And this is creating a layering and masking effect. So creating a masking effect in your designs can really level them up and help them appear like a pro created them because it seems like something that would be pretty difficult to do in a graphic design software, but really with Canva, with this hack, you can do it pretty easily. So let's say we have this picture of this girl against this textured wall and we wanna add some text to appear like it's on the wall behind her. We're actually gonna select our photo and then click the duplicate button to give us a second identical photo. So you can see I have two of the same photo here. And now while I have this second photo still selected, I'm gonna come up to edit photo and use the background remover. Now I could also potentially use the magic grab function as they do some similar things, but here I'm gonna just remove the background from this second photo using that background remover. So now when I move this picture around, you can see the background has been removed and it's just the picture of the subject, which is the girl. I've still got my first original photo that still has the background, but now I've got this second one of the girl. So I'm going to actually position this second one right over the top of the first. So you can't even tell Tell. There's two photos there. And then I'm going to click on the text option to add whatever text I'd like. Then I can just work with my text to duplicate and arrange it in the order I like, continuing to duplicate and arrange it how I want it all the way down. And now you can see that my text is still the top layer. It's over the other photos I have. So I'm going to select all of these text layers and click on position and send them backward. If I just click it once, it just sends it behind the top image of the girl, but still on top of the bottom image that had that wall still. So it appears like our text is still on top of the wall, but behind the girl in the picture. You can see if I click and drag the picture of the girl on the top, how we have our different layers. We've got our photo in the back, then the text, then the picture of the girl on the top. So this is a way to use different layers to create this masking effect that looks really professional and high end. You can see in this graphic here that we've created for my digital products with Canva course, how we used a similar effect, separating the foreground of me from the background of the photo, which started out all as one photo and inputting this square element behind the top picture of me and using the transparency slider to make that square a little bit see-through so you can see the background through that colored square. You can see if I click on the picture of me and drag it away, how I have that top layer. We've got the bottom photo with the square on top, the top layer of the same photo of me right on top there, giving us this really nice layered effect. Okay, moving on to Canva hack number five, and that is to use gradients in several different forms. So if you're not familiar, a gradient is when you use multiple different colors that look like it's slow shifting from one dissolving into the next or even the next three or four colors across a page or an element. So let's start with looking here at using a gradient as a background. Instead of just changing this background to a solid color like I might do with this solid green color, I can level it up a little bit by using a gradient and coming to this plus sign and switching from solid color to gradient. When I switch over to gradient, you can see that it's taken my original green color and it's added one extra color, which I can click on to then change that secondary color. And I can see reflected in my design here, how it's slowly starting with my first color on the left and dissolving into the second color on the right. It's pretty subtle here with these two colors because they're similar, but if I choose something like a totally different contrasting color, you can see the difference. Now I could add a third color and a fourth color. I can really add several different colors to this gradient if I like and continue just choosing as I'm going along which colors I want. So this is really fun to do to use for a background, but we can also use this in a shape. So if we come to the elements tab, we see the shapes section. This gives us lots of different basic and fun shapes. So let's say I want to use this sort of star badge shape. And right now it's in this solid gold color. If I want to change this solid color to a gradient, I can come up to the color again, choose add a new color and switch over to gradient. And again, go through the same process to create a gradient with the colors I like inside this star. So we've done a great in the background, we've done a gradient with a shape. And the third fun thing we can do is gradient in text. So let's come to our app section and we're gonna use the app called Type Gradient. 
When we click on the type gradient app, this is going to allow us to input whatever text we want in our design, choose the font that we'd like from this list of fun different fonts. We can choose our alignment on the page if we want it to be left aligned, centered, or right aligned. And we can play around with the line height here with this slider. So if we want more space in between our lines, we can slide it to the right and play around with this until we're happy with where that is. And then we can choose our gradient color. So it starts out with three here. We can click on one and change the colors one by one to what we like in our gradient, seeing it reflected here in the preview image. You can always add more colors by just clicking somewhere in that line and continue adding the different shades we'd like. And once we're happy with the shades, we can also change the direction the colors are going inside the text by clicking on these little circles and dragging them around until we're happy with how that looks. And once we are, we can click to add to design and here we have it in our design, which we can then continue working with. Gradients are such a fun way to level things up and make your design really visually appealing. Okay, moving right along to our next Canva hack and that is to use the app called Brand Fetch. So let's say you're wanting to use a certain logo from a company for a design you're creating and you search in the elements, let's say for something like the Instagram logo. You can see some that are similar here, but maybe you're not finding exactly the one you want. So you can come to your apps, type in brand fetch and use the brand fetch app to search for the brand you're looking for. So if I type in Instagram, it's pulling up Instagram here and giving me actual logos that I can use from Instagram as well as related colors and their hex codes. And some brands even have images in this section here. So if I'm wanting to use one of these Instagram logos, I can easily click to add this to my design and continue working with it from here. There are lots of different great brands on the Brand Fetch app. I've used logos from Shopify, Etsy, Canva itself, and this just gives you a great alternative for any kind of brand logos you might want to use as opposed to looking for them in the elements section. Another really fun Canva hack is to use transparency to create a disappearing text effect. So you can see an example of this in this recent ad graphic that we created. And you can see how this text in the background that says digital products behind me is slowly looking like it's disappearing from bottom to top. So the way you'll do this in Canva is to first go ahead and select your background color and add in your text that you want to be going across the background. You'll wanna make sure to choose the right font and size this appropriately for the way you want your design to look. Next with your text selected, you're gonna to wanna to choose your text color. So you're gonna come up to the text color box. And for this, I'm gonna choose a color that is based basically similar to the background color, but a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna select that same background color, but then click on it again so it opens up this box and I can drag this to be a similar color, but a lighter shade. As I drag it, I can start to see it appearing on my canvas again, and I'm gonna go with that one. So then my next step is to go ahead and click the duplicate button on my text to give me another copy of the same text and place this where I want it. I'm gonna have this moving from bottom to top up the page, and I'm gonna continue duplicating this, clicking the duplicate button as many times as I'd like it to go up the page. Now I've got several duplicates of my text. So starting with the second one, the idea here is to go one by one through each text and make it a little more transparent than the last. So with the text selected, I can come up to my transparency box and use the slider to move it left to make the text a little more transparent. You'll see as I continue to the left, it makes it more and more see-through. And if I go all the way to the left, it disappears completely. This is just my second to the bottom. I'm not gonna wanna do too much. I might bring it from 100 down to let's say 75. Then I'm gonna select the next one above that and come back up. And I want this one to be lower than 75 because I'm wanting each one to be increasingly more see-through as I go up. So I'm gonna put this one at 58. I'm gonna do the next one at around 35 and the next one around 17. And you can see how it's slowly looking like it's disappearing into the background. Now, if you wanted to be really precise, you could figure out with your transparency numbers an equal amount between each one, but I don't think it really matters that much. You still get the effect this way. And then of course you would want to layer on top anything else you want for your design. I love using this transparency tool for different shapes and elements, but I especially love it for text when we're trying to create effects like this. All right, next I'm gonna show you a really fun hack for quick color application. So let's say you're working with a design like this inside of Canva that you've got some different colors going on. You wanna change the colors around, but you don't wanna do it one by one manually. A quick hack for this is to find a photo or an image that includes colors that you already like. If you don't have one, you can always search an element so let's say I want retro colors. I'm gonna come over to photos and let's say I like the colors in this. I'm gonna click to add this on top of my existing design or if I have a different photo, I can upload that and drag it in on top. And then with this new 
one on top of the one I'm working on, I can right click and select apply colors to page and that will automatically take the colors in this new design that I dragged on top and apply it to the design I'm working on. I can continue right clicking and selecting that button over and over again to sort of shuffle through the different color options from this new design until I find one I'm happy with. This is just a quick and easy way as opposed to manually trying to figure out what colors I should use and changing each one if I've got a design I've already been working on. Okay, the next tool we're gonna look at is super handy and convenient and that is the tidy up option. So there are lots of instances where you may be working on a design in Canva that you need different elements or text to be lined up really neatly and you just can't quite figure out how to manually get it there or it's just taking too much time. So for instance, let's say that we've added several different lines here in this design for something like an ebook or some type of digital product we're working on. I'm gonna scatter these just for the sake of this demonstration. So we have all of these lines that we're wanting to use, maybe to create a notebook page effect or something. So whatever elements we have that we want to be lined up, we can click to drag and select all of them together. And when we do, this little menu option pops up. We're gonna click on the three dots and under where it says space evenly, we've got one that says tidy up. When we click that, it automatically brings all of our lines into perfectly spaced out alignment so that we're not having to manually try to line everything up. This works with elements too. So I've got this graphic of a flower. Let's say I'm doing something fun with this and using several of these as bullet points for different pieces of text I'm gonna add, but I can't quite get them all lined up perfectly. I can click to select, come to space evenly and tidy up and boom, I've got it right there in an instant. And our next Canva hack is creating a stroke effect. So if you worked in Photoshop or another graphic design software, you may have been familiar with what's called a stroke effect, which Canva doesn't currently have an equivalent for something like Photoshop's stroke effect. But what you can do inside of Canva is create a similar stroke effect by using a text outline. So we've got our text here and with that selected, I'm gonna change it to the color that I want and then come up to effects and I'm going to select outline, which I can then choose the color of the outline. So you can see here how we've got our text with this darker outline color on it. Now I can always change that by coming here and then I can use this thickness slider and bring it to the right to increase the thickness of that outline. And if I come all the way to the right, you can see how the outline of the letters are starting to sort of blend together, creating a full stroke around the word. Now, if I want to edit this even further, I can come up to my spacing option up top where it says spacing. I've got letter spacing and line spacing. So for this, I'm gonna use the letter spacing, which is referring to the space between each individual letter. So I can add more space in between or decrease the spacing to bring the letters closer together. I can get super creative with this depending on what I want my design to look like. And I can even take it a step further by coming back to my text effects and adding a curve if I'd like by selecting the curve feature and then using my curve slider to either bring this circle out or tighter depending on how close in I want the curve to be. Of course, I can always change the font around if I want a different fun font, but this is just a really fun way to get that sort of outline stroke effect inside of Canva. So friend, those are our 10 Canva hacks. And if you're interested in creating and selling digital products online to make passive revenue, then I'd love to hang out with you live this coming Thursday, April 11th for my free training class, Digital Product Powerhouse. I'll be going live that day at 2 p.m. and 8 p.m. Eastern time. So you can pick whichever time works for you. And there will be a replay available for everyone who registers. So go ahead and click that link in the description box below to get registered. And if by the time you're watching this, that date has already passed, no worries, friend. I'm sure I'll be doing the training again at some point. But in the meantime, you can click the link in the description box below to grab my free digital product starter guide. It's also going to get you started off on the right foot. Happy designing friends. Hey.